Hey there, so uh, right here I have my Polaroid camera right here, and I was just going to go ahead and do like a step-by-step, -step, like uncut sort of, here's the process of how to fix a particular issue with this silly camera. Um, so the One Step 2 has a funky problem where sometimes your, you know, your lens ring would kind of drop and it would end up swinging, so now the camera doesn't have like the lens isn't in place so the camera can't take a photo. It's a really weird issue that was fixed with a One Step Plus because you have like the cool f like switch camera up here. Um, but yeah, it, I don't know. It's uh, I, maybe that's just a little oversight on their part for this first version of the camera. But anyways, the fixing process is actually very easy. There's just one small, not as elegant part of the process but it's it's very simple um so let's get into it so first thing first before well make sure that you don't have any film in the cameras second thing is it's good to have a multi screwdriver set um this is a precision screwdriver set husky i don't know if you want the same exact one but i found a bit size that really works for the camera um i don't know the bit size um but if you just you know have a precision tool set and you know, you can try a couple bits where, you know, it still bites, but it doesn't, you know, destroy the screw. Um, then go ahead and use that. That's fair game. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it on its corner here and just going to... can't really see. Sorry. I'm going to take out these two top screws. Make sure I'm careful of not stripping the screw. Um... Another handy thing that I don't have here, but it's also, it's very nice, is a magnet. Um, having a magnet is very handy because you can keep the screws away um, together without having to worry that it's going to, you know, roll around somewhere. And Oh, if, you, if you're really interested, this is actually a 3 by 32 inch uh, head for the uh, Phillips screwdriver, and then I'm going to use a 3x32 flathead part. So this next part is not that elegant, I will say. I'm sure that there's probably better ways of doing it, but uh, yeah. So I'm just going to pry... Hold on, it's usually easier on my corner. I'm just going to get my nail, and I'm just going to pry at a corner. <sighs> yeah. This part's a little tough. So, yeah, pry a corner there, you saw. And I'm just going to go around the edge and pry it off. Uh, since it's... Ugh, since it's fitted plastic, um, it's it's a little hard to get, especially down in these sides. So I, I advise just kind of clipping off the corner here and just, like, prying it here and then slowly just kind of pop it off there, but it's going to fly off. So here's the open camera. But before we get into that, I'm going to address something there. So one time when I was opening this camera and you probably, you literally saw my process. So, um, I was not that careful with handling this plastic panel. I advise that once you have this plastic panel off, leave it somewhere off on the side where you're not going to touch it. You're not going to screw it up. Because I accidentally bent out this red button piece, so you can see how it's kind of flush. It's flush with the base plate panel, but I bent it in like this. And um, that caused an issue where the button was always depressed, uh, as in like the, 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 the button that you press to take the photos. Um, it was always depressed, so it, you know, photos never, you know, shot. So I had to thought I broke the camera until I figured out that this part just got bent out so I had to rebend it and now it's totally fine um but yeah so just be very careful in that aspect so here's the inner inner part of the camera um not really too much you can do here um or that you have to do here or touch or fiddle with or whatever this is kind of like the main attraction this center part so you can't really see my repair but I used a black uh, pin, rubber pin back, if you know what those are for, you know, lapel pins. Um, 
I have a lot of those. I have a collection of those. So I had a spare one. But pretty much the idea is you want to insert something here into this cavity. And especially down towards the left. So that this piece... And you'll know that it's not working anymore if you can touch this part. And it's not moving. So for me, it's... It, I mean, it's just stuck because something's jammed in there. Um, but that's good in this case because what's jammed is the lens side. So now the camera is not going to move. And I assure you that this works because I this is my carry around Polaroid. And it hasn't, you know, I haven't had any issues with it ever since I fixed it. So, um, yeah, I just thought to share that. Um, I also, I'm also pretty sure that you can take out this little piece of glass if something happens with it where it's foggy, but unfortunately mine's a little bit, uh, it came like this, so I can't actually fix it, unfortunately, but, you know, that's fine. Um, so yeah, so here's the in, in, inner components of the camera, how you fix it, so make sure that the camera doesn't move anymore by the time when you uh, finish you know, repairing it, that's how you're going to make sure. And also make sure that um, it's not going to dislodge over time. Like, you might fix it, it might, you know, work for a little bit, but if you shake it around, put it in your backpack, throw it in, and, you know, it, it dislodges, you might have to do this process again. So, once you fix that, now, easy part is, now you get the plate, now you get the plate, you fit it in carefully, Again, you want to do this very carefully. Inspect the camera. See that as I crunch plastic into plastic. Um, yeah, so that should be fine. Yeah. Pop, pop, pop. Make sure that. I'm pressing the red red button. I hear a small press and I'm getting a big press so I didn't screw that up again um dial still works turn on the camera the self timer works so hooray everything works so now before you rejoice um last thing is you have to repair your camera and make sure it's secure so you have to I forgot to change the head. Change the head back to a Phillips. And... Jeez. Okay. Sorry, this is going to take me a sec. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, you, you know that it's real because I'm currently struggling with my own repair process. There you go. Screw it in. I'm just doing, you know, hand tight. I'm not. I'm not going all the way in um, for the screw because again, don't want to strip strip it. Keep that in place. Screw that in. Cool. Now your puller. Right camera <laughs> should should work goodness golly okay cool um now your polaroid camera should be all good um i i think i want to address just um one more thing um or i guess two more things uh first thing is you might be wondering what this pink film is on my polaroid um this is actually just a flash gel i use it to um uh to kind of take better more consistent photos of people with lighter complexions it creates a kind of like pinkish magenta hue on your polaroid um which might be a little annoying um if you prefer you know if you prefer the the pure vibey colors of it of a polaroid but i found that it's if it means that i'm going to get a little bit more consistent results even if the photos come out a little bit pinkish i'm okay with that um, and, you know, if anything, if it really bothers you, you can, you know, once you scan your Polaroids, you can fix it post-process. So, 
I thought that was a cool little hack for my myself. Um, and the other thing is, um, don't mess with this bottom part, really. Um, you don't have to remove this bottom plate because that will just, like, unleash the rollers unless you have to clean the rollers. But again, if you have to clean the rollers, you know, use follow what Polaroid says and use a cotton swab and some rubbing alcohol and should be all good. Um, I actually have to um, make sure that this works before I really suggest you doing it. But I found an issue, a solution to an issue where if your Polaroid photos aren't ejecting out completely, um, you can buy this like rubber lubricant stuff meant for like the rollers for printers and like photocopiers and you can put it on to the rollers itself uh, a couple spritz onto a, like a paper towel and like rub it on apparently that re-lubricates re the rollers so that they can completely uh, eject the film uh, I saw this from a video of some guy repairing a uh, vintage Polaroid camera, and it worked really well for him. So I might have to try that because this camera is having, like, that same issue. Actually. Yeah. So I think, I actually think that I haven't clicked this in enough. So now I have to make sure this works. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so just make sure that your uh, screws are all the way in, or else they're not going to close all the way. So, yeah, that should uh, that should fix your Polaroid camera. Now, whenever I put it in my backpack, it's not going to shake or get loose. Um, I don't have every single solution to fix Polaroids, um, but I just really enjoy these cameras and have done enough tinkering myself to kind of understand the basics of how this camera works so i'll definitely try to help you out if you have any questions um but yeah i hope this was handy seeing my process uncut uh, it's very simple but uh yeah so 